So I'm so blessed. I go there and I sit down and there's like a whole bunch of people already having breakfast. So you know, I you this morning. I join in, order my breakfast, everybody's eating, I'm eating. Since I was the last one, everybody had left over. I look around here, nobody else left. But me. So I finished my breakfast, so I told the lady. I remember I told you I'm really blessed. So they say, hey, you know what we got next to you? You paid for me breakfast. I said, oh, great. That's wonderful. So, hey, let me give you a tip. He gave me the tip. After me. I almost asked how much. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway, that was good. But the best part is, just as I woke out of the restaurant, I found a kind of little, like, kind of wrinkle on the floor. You know what I'm saying? Isn't that? <laughs> Isn't a good way to start your morning? <laughs> you know, somebody pays you breakfast, a tip. You buy the beach, you find ten dollars. 
That was me. Really? <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know if there's somebody else. So I took it ten dollars. As I was driving to this member's house, I see this man he's carrying like, you know, picking up things. Like a homeless kind of person. I stop. I stopped correctly. Went to him. No, he says, How are you? He says, Ah, oh, you know, day by day, my friend, but this is your day. This $10 for you to get you some coffee or something. The guy, I'm telling you, I couldn't believe this guy. I don't know if he did the salsa <laughs> or he danced in the Holy Spirit. <laughs> but the guy was doing no kind of things. So, I thought I'd share that with you. That's how that's but I'm here to pray for your graduation. Congratulations, Medical 34. You are a blessing to our school. And you are a blessing to everyone else that you're going to service sooner or later. So let us bow our heads. And let us call before God so He can continue to bless your lives, your families, and our school. Oh my God. You are our creator and our sustainer. You are our light and our fortress. You are our wisdom and you are our strength. We ask for your guidance and give us a guiding hand to lead us through this graduation, Medic 34. May we approach our tasks with wisdom and may we approach our graduates with respect and honor. Thank you, God, for giving us the beautiful day to celebrate Medic 34. And we ask these things in your powerful name of Jesus. And we all said, Amen. Amen. Thank you very much. because you have an option on what day you want to come. And it's really hard to duplicate two days exactly. Even if the same instructor comes in on one day to come on the second day, it's hard even for himself to duplicate exactly what he did the first day. So it is a complicated car, uh, uh, course, but at the same token, it's a very convenient program to be able to choose. Or even better yet, I didn't really get the information the way I wanted the first day. Let me come day two. So. But I commend you. I do want to tell you, uh, tell the family, share with the family how many hours of just classroom and clinical time they did. We're not talking uh, study time, any time outside of school. But these guys endured 1,146 hours in one year. And that one year, 600 of those is actually clinical time when they did in the hospital, OB, pediatrics, or the fire rescue, or EMS agency. Mm -hmm. And then in the ER as well as those other peripherals. So that's a lot of time outside and away from your family, let alone all the time you have to add, hopefully you double that, and study. They say they did, but you know, they say they did probably now, which is really probably like 600, but it's still a lot of time. So I do want to commend your family for, for dealing with, with your uh, program and the study and the heartaches I'm sure you put them through. So I think we should, oh, we should give your family a round of applause. So um, today, today is a special day as well. Uh, today, not only Medic 34 uh, graduates, but one of my instructors who's been with me for a long time, who actually is his day of retirement. <coughs> Rick Slate has been with me for a long time, since 2009. I know you probably say, well, it's not long. In education, they're like dog years. <laughs> so six, you know, th those years he's with me were a very long time. A lot of hard work and dedication. 
Rick probably, as much as Rick, Rick worked, is probably his equivalent to dedication and volunteer time was probably as equal. So the time that he was here paid, Rick dedicated probably double that amount to, uh, to the students, to my staff, to everyone. And I definitely commend him for that. So it's actually uh, a very important day. And I want to just give some numbers real quick. Rick, since he started with me, he taught 23, par 23 paramedic programs. He taught in 16 EMT programs. He educated 360 paramedics and educated 642 EMTs in the time he was here with me. It's our pleasure. It was our pleasure to have you here, and I'm sure you still be around. You still got to do your refreshes if you plan to maintain your graduation. I expect to see you in class. Um, but Rick will be around. Rick, uh, I, I will want to extend to Rick as uh, part as my uh, co uh, uh, offgoing faculty as on my advisory board. So we created a position on our advisory board for Rick to be part of our school, even though he's retired, because Rick brings good feedback uh, to what we do here. He's been here a long time. We beat Rick up a whole lot. We all probably say, yeah, we, know that means, uh, we all beat Rick up. So Rick took a beat, but he, he, he went his full rounds, and, and he made it, he, he made the champion. Um, so I, I definitely uh, commend uh, Rick uh, for the hard work and dedication you provided to me personally, to my, to my wife and my organization, uh, helping my my newer instructors and help educate these students and and all the time you dedicate it on your own. Just so people don't people know. Uh, Rick, raise your hand, Rick, please so they don't know who I is. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Just to give you a little insight on Rick. Um, Rick had a partner when he first started this organization. Uh, when he first became an EMT he had a partner. His name was Moses. <laughs> and many, many years ago, when he first started, he was being precepted by Moses. He was fortunate to deliver Jesus. So that's how long Rick's been doing this stuff. So, but I, I, I wanna, I wanna bring Rick up because uh, we, we got a little something for you, Rick. But uh, we got him a plaque here from the school, and I wanna read what the plaque says. It says, "Rick Slade." Time to stop living at work, and time to start uh, working on living. Happy Retirement on Land Medical Institute, November 11, 2015. And it says, thank you for all your help. We couldn't have done it without you. All right. Before Rick leaves the stage um, on the Avenue 34, we'd like to give him a little going away to get through his early retirement. <laughs> Just let you know, Rick is always telling the students, you want to buy me something? I don't want your money to help me study. Buy me a case of Coors Light. <laughs> I take it serious. Thanks, Rick. I got the case, Rick. I'll give it to you a little bit. Don't want you to drop it.
Ya.
I'd like to invite uh, Mike is up first, and then followed by Felix to reflect on their past year with um, first, um, we made a contract with these people the first day of class. I told them it was going to be nearly impossible. Uphill both ways, that you were going to cry, you were going to hate us all, that you were going to go through hell and back. And um, all of you now know I was not lying. Um, been there, done that, you beat each other up, you beat, these, you beat yourselves up, and certainly took some pokes at us. Um, you worked as hard as any group I've ever seen. Um, this is like the most diverse group of human beings that was ever assembled in one room. And, and they found a common core, you know, and it was basically just to torture us um, for about a year or so. Um, th these, are, these are great human beings. I will miss every single person in this class. Just based on you're so different, and the fact that you all came together and became one group, as you have, probably more so than any class I've ever seen. Um, and, and that probably means more in the long run than what your GPA was or what the grades were. I know it's difficult for me to say that at this point. I'm like, well, now it doesn't count. <laughs> <laughs> but the stuff that counts in the long run is, is how you change and how you grow up as people. And, and with, with everything you've done and supporting each other, every time one of you stumbled, five of you picked them up. Every single time. And, and, that, and that counts. That, that counts. It's life points. Um, we do also made a contract that um, while I'm still a working paramedic out there in the real world, um, everybody's first code save, I get credit for stuff. <laughs> and after that, they're all yours. Tally them up, or write them down, enjoy them, they're all yours. The first one, that's fine. It's <laughs> like a thing, pay it forward thing. I got that. Try to really overblow my own code save numbers. I feel like it's completely appropriate. Um, we'll miss you all. Um, it's, congratulations. You worked hard, you earned every bit, you got it, you helped the gate yet. So, congratulations to all of them, truly. Felix? Let me first, I wanted to say uh, one first, thank you my staff. My staff is here, Abby, Director of uh, Operations. She holds the day-to-day -day here at the school, so I want to thank her for the job well done. Rosa Priscilla, I uh, just saw Priscilla, I don't know where she went, but Rosa Priscilla is our student services. Their job is to keep the students' files in order. So thank you again. Lisa, who is the front desk, uh, our job is to give you a smile every day. I hope she did that. I'm very excited to you. Sarah Glass, who's our clinical coordinator, she's the one that sets them up with clinical and drives them nuts with their paperwork. <laughs> and uh, my team of instructors who uh, dedicate a lot of time and effort to teach these guys exactly what they know here today. And uh, I got Elmer, uh, Elmer, right there. He's <laughs> Standing right next to him uh, is Chris Wolf, the guy with the gun. And as we all know, uh, this is Rick's last class, so Rick. <laughs> My, oh yeah, we got Gary, we got Gary, Gary, Gary. <laughs> and then their lead instructor, uh, Mike Islock. Team, thanks. Thank you. Job well done. And I uh, appreciate that. So just a quick, uh, uh, just a little bit. Mike, Mike covered a lot of good stuff. And, and you guys hear me, you know, heard me talk all day, every day, in the last year. And I got to hear him speak again. But uh, I'm going to try to keep it as short as possible. What I want to do is just kind of give you guys a words of encouragement. Words of encouragement. And, and that, just to let you know exactly what you guys are getting into when you put that patch on as a paramedic. It's a huge responsibility. It's, it's probably one of the most, uh, to me, one of the most important responsibilities at the same time, a privilege to have. And I told you guys earlier, don't let nobody take away what you put into this. This is yours. Don't let nobody take it away from you. Um, 
What you do out there is important. We save people's lives. As I told you, unfortunately, people can't pick or choose uh, who takes care of them. But we can pick or choose whether we want to take care of them. And what that means is doing the right thing for these patients, whether it's 2 o'clock in the afternoon or 2 o'clock in the morning. You know, whether they call for belly pain or they're having this massive heart attack. Anytime somebody picks up that, that uh, phone and now nine and one, we got to take it as an emergency. They're not medically trained, so we can't be mad at them. But it's our job to provide the care, whether it's actual life-saving care or just comfort care, psychological first aid, like to call it. That's what our job is. That's what we signed up to do, to serve, to serve our community. And I hope you continue your education. What you got here is the foundation of what paramedicine is all about. Right here today, as of today, today is when the learning really truly takes place. When you go out there and you start working as a paramedic, when you work with those senior medics out there, and they're going to show you the tricks of the trade and from their experiences. Really important. So this, you might learn a few uh, on what not to do, but that's a learning experience as well. But for the majority of you, you'll learn exactly what to do. So the worst thing to do is to be out there feeling incompetent knowing you have the skills and the trade to do so. As I told you many times, if I don't work a pediatric code in the next six months, it doesn't give me the right to be incompetent when I do get that pediatric code. It's my job to be on point all the time as a practicing paramedic. So that's key. And I'm gonna share a quick story with you and I'm gonna end it with this story. Because this is the story that changed my life. This is the story that why I do what I do. Uh, and why I dedicate my life here and I teach seven days a week, and I still work in the fire service, and I really, truly love what I do. Every day, all day. To me, going to work is really my day off, because I enjoy it so much, I feel like, you know, I can't believe they paid me to do this. So, but keep the paycheck coming, I don't want to change that. But <laughs> that's, how, that, that's how I feel. And the quick story I want to share with you, many, many years ago, when I got into this field, I came out the military, and I didn't have a job. My uncle offered me a job as an MPO, a motor vehicle operator. My job was to have a driver's license and make sure I could start it, know where the siren's at, and make sure I could get these people from point A to point B. The guy riding shotgun was the EMT. So I had no medical knowledge whatsoever. I didn't know CPR, I didn't know how to spell patient like that. So all I did was drive. And um, I met this young lady, and I was intrigued with this young lady, and I wanted to date her, and I happened to see her in my ambulance, and right away, the impression is he saved lives. <laughs> so she was impressed as she came from a family where her father was a pastor. And they weren't allowed to have boyfriends. You know, they were little, they were young. Well, not that little. Clearly. You know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but she wasn't you know, allowed to have a boyfriend until she was married. But the father actually grew a liking to me. And he allowed me to take his daughter out. Not on a day, and not on a day. I could take her out of the house as long as I brought the sister with me. With so I bring the whole family. So that was my day. But anyway, long story short, in his mind, he said, well, this kid saved lives. I do the same thing in ministry. So I like this kid. So anyway, one day they invite me over after almost a year of taking everybody out and wasting my whole paycheck. And I was making, by the way, about five twenty-five an hour. Uh, they invite me over for Thanksgiving. I come over, and what happens? Her grandfather, which is his dad, has a massive heart attack. So they say, Don't worry, get Felix. He's in the living room. So Felix does come over, and I know what's going on. I see this guy unresponsive laying on the floor. And it, I say, Call 911. Good thing I remember that number. So they call 911, and they're like, Yeah, he knows he's an EMT. I was like, ooh, probably this is not a good time to say I'm not. <laughs> so um, I never said I was, nor did I deny on my defense. Um, so they said check a pulse, and I didn't know where to check a pulse, but I know it was somewhere in there. I said my heart to do it. So I figured I grabbed the whole entire neck, I should feel something. <laughs> well, I started thinking, if I tell them no pulse, what's the biggest thing in EMS? The critical you are, the faster they get there. No pulse. Tell him to hurry up. And they said, yeah, he knows. They said, if he has no pulse, start CPR. I was like, whoa, I didn't expect that one. <laughs> I feel the pulse. Just tell him to hurry up. <laughs> so anyway, fast forward. The gentleman dies. But the family was so thankful that I was there. And they praised me and thanked me. They said, my father had opportunities because you was there. 
And you want to talk about feeling incompetent? You want to talk about what I was telling you earlier, Ralph, don't go play in traffic? I was ready to go play in the traffic with a noose and a hook on the other end to see which the first car I could hook. And they could take me away. That day changed my life. That day I knew exactly what I wanted to do. I wanted to save lives. I wanted to get this feeling I had out of my system. The guilt was unbelievable. Do you know it took me over 17 years to even share my story? That story was shared with not one person. 17 years before I shared that story. In those 17 years, I went to MT school, I went to paramedic school. I became the best paramedic I feel that I could be. I worked in the system, I taught the paramedic program, I even opened my own school. And still people didn't know my story. But that man died in my arms to change my life. And every day that I say to myself, man, fifth call after freaking midnight, holy cow, I can't believe this. I don't want to do nothing. I want to go over there and just get in the back of the ambulance and move forward. I think about that man. And you know what I do? I provide everybody the same exact care. And I swear, you can ask anybody who works for me and say, Felix's care doesn't change. Whether it be 2 o'clock in the afternoon, 2 o'clock in the morning. I'm giving everybody the care that they deserve because they count on me. And that story, that is my wife's grandfather who died in my arms. The gentleman who was up here, Rosario, was his father who died in my arms, who changed my life. So, that's why sometimes I do get tough with you guys. Sometimes I do get upset. And I'm not getting upset because I'm mad at you. I'm getting upset because I never want you to feel what I experienced. And that feeling of incompetence is the worst feeling ever. Now, God forbid that was a two year old. How would you feel that? So, the moral of my story is, is be prepared for what you do. Every day you go to work, be serious about it. You don't work at Walmart. You put the beans in the rice section. No problem or harm. This is people's lives. So if you push the wrong drug, do the wrong thing, or just blink for the second and say, man, I, w I was half asleep and I pushed that drug, you can't take that back. So we really got to pay attention to what we're doing. So what you got here today, or this last year, was the foundation of your empire. So I feel you have a, you have a phenomenal foundation. Now, what you do with that foundation, what you build on is 100% up to you. Whether you continue your education, whether you listen to the people who are trying to teach you, listen to the people who are trying to train you, learn from your cause. Are you going to make mistakes? Absolutely. Learn from it. Learn from it. So that's the empire you will build on your foundation from here forward. And I hope when people write about you in 20 years of your history of being a paramedic, it's in pen. Where it becomes permanent, people remember not that expensive when people create a race and forget about what you've done in life. So, once again, I want to thank you guys for choosing Orlando Medical Institute as your place for education. And I'm very proud of you guys. And we still got one more hurdle on the state exam. So it's not over yet. Okay? So, anyway, congratulations. that uh, as Felix has indicated, it's, it's just the start. It really is. There's many opportunities out there in terms of uh, allied health, as it may be, whether it's continuing on to be a nurse, a nurse practitioner, a physician, and so on and so forth. So I encourage you to continue your education. And it doesn't necessarily mean that you have to go enroll into another program right away. But there are various little steps that you can take. You can take small steps such as critical care paramedic. You can take different courses. Uh, cath lab opportunities are there. Emergency room opportunities are there. Ambulance opportunities are there. Fire department opportunities are there. So the, the allied health profession, that's the best profession there is. And I've been doing it for about 27 years, so I'm very committed to that profession. And uh, I can't say any more than you've gotten the best education right now. 
and you can only move forward and do better. So I congratulate you on your accomplishment thus far and look forward to more accomplishments as you move forward.
Feel free to take pictures of your instructions. Class picture, take a class of all you guys if you don't mind real quick.